Hello guys, new Apple Times here, welcome to a new video and yes, I'm back after a long time and today we're gonna try to see whether it's worth upgrading your Apple Watch Series 3 to the brand new Apple Watch Series 9. Okay, so to do that what we're going to do is uh, list every single new feature that has been added to every single Apple Watch from the Apple Watch Series 4 and to the latest Apple Watch Series 9, which was just unveiled like a few minutes ago. And yeah, so we're gonna start with the Apple Watch Series 4. So the Apple Watch Series 4 was actually a pretty breakthrough uh, in the sense that it, it added quite a few features that were like really first ones and I think they were the first Apple Watch that really focused more on like innovation rather than improving performance because the first generations of the Apple Watch were pretty much unusable. But yeah, it added a few features such as for the first time a new redesign which was phased out in the Apple Watch Series 7 but it still continues in the Apple Watch SE. Also for the first time it had a 64-bit chip which in my opinion it was the first time that the Apple Watch was actually usable. And then it also added fault detection, electrocardiogram or ECG and with all that uh, ECG sensors we had for the first time the low heart rate notifications. Then came the Series 5. The Series 5 was a way smaller update which only added like three things which actually only two were actually useful and in most situations only one and sometimes not even that one. But anyway, it added an always on display, which was okay, but as you can see, I have it deactivated on mine, so I don't really see the point in that. It also added a compass, which is actually useful when you're, if you use the map a lot on your watch or if you are on a route or anything. And last year they updated the compass app uh, with the release of the Apple Watch Series 8 and the Apple Watch Ultra. And it's actually pretty useful now to add waypoints on your route. And last, and least, uh, it for the first time had 32 gigabytes of internal storage, which is okay if you want to store songs or pretty much songs <laughs> and other apps in your Apple Watch. And the next year, as it was expected, we got the Apple Watch Series 6. And this one was an even smaller update. The only two new features on the Apple Watch Series 6 were the blood oxygen sensor, which is okay for, to, for taking readings and that's it. And a brand new chip that was 50% faster. Then in 2021 we got the Apple Watch Series 7. The Apple Watch Series 7 featured yet another redesign which is actually the one you'll find in the Apple Watch Series 9 if you were to buy it. It had a brighter always on display which if you saw that I don't have it enabled you can see how much I care about that one. It featured better water and dust resistance which is actually good. And actually for me the best feature and the one I love the most about the new Apple Watch is fast charging. This however is only possible with the charger that is included with your Apple Watch. So if you have any accessories like the magnetic charging stand or the MagSafe Duo, they will not work with that, which is actually horrible. <laughs> but yeah, then last year in 2022 we got the Apple Watch Series 8. The Apple Watch Series 8, as its kind of tradition, had three new things. Uh, for once, it had roaming on the cellular models. It had a GeForce accelerometer which enabled crash detection, the same that was present on the iPhone 14 and 14 Pro. And it had the brand new temperature sensor that enables read temperature measurements that are good for more accurate um, sleep tracking and cycle prediction for people that have their cycles. And finally we come to the Apple Watch Series 9, which was just unveiled now. <laughs> now the thing is, the Apple Watch Series 9 really only has three new features, but one of them enables for many features. And that feature is of course a brand new chip. We had the S9, which has been the, the first update in the system on a chip on the Apple Watch since the Apple Watch Series 6. And the S9 is of course a bit faster and everything, but it actually enables a lot of features, some of which are actually really cool and in my opinion even worth upgrading from a more recent Apple Watch. Which I actually made these kind of videos a few years and it's something I don't say often if you have been following those. And those features are on-device Siri, which is good, we've had that in the iPhone for a couple of years now I think, and yeah, 
It makes it faster if you want to say something simple like uh, set a timer or start a workout or something like that. And then we have double tap, which is super cool because you can just do this. Kind of actually like the Apple Vision Pro, Apple is kind of getting you ready to do this gesture because it's what you're going to control the Apple, the Apple Vision Pro with. So they want you to get used to this gesture. Um, yeah, just a thought that I just had actually. But anyway, this gesture enables really cool things like doing things like this, so like snoozing an alarm, starting a timer, answering or ending a phone call, stuff like that. If you have one of your hands um, with something, you can just do this and actually control your Apple Watch, which is actually pretty cool. I really like that feature. Then speaking of chips, it has a brand new U2 chip, which is not like the band. But it's actually um, the new ultra wideband chip which what it does, it kind of localizes the device in space so it can contact other devices in space. So from the iPhone 11 onwards, they've had the U1 chip. The HomePods have the U1 chip and the Apple Watches have had that for some time now as well. But yeah, this basically allows for a lot of integration and better integration with all the Apple devices. For example, and this is actually pretty cool, do you know this feature that can make your iPhone sound if you don't find it? Well, that has been improved and now it kind of acts like an AirTag finder. So you can go around the room um, finding the iPhone and it will tell you exactly where it is. So that's super cool actually. And another thing enabled by that chip is HomePod integration. So now when you're near a HomePod, you will see it pop up first in your Watch OS 10 smart stack. And yeah, you'll just be able to play music in your HomePod or control the playback in your HomePod from your Apple Watch without having to do anything just by getting close to it, which is pretty cool. Other than those features, we get a brighter display, which is actually the same one present in the last generation Apple Watch Ultra, which we also had a new one, but the older one had 200, 2000 nits. And for the first time, and I know this is something most of you won't care about, but I really do, so I want to stress this out. For the first time, the Apple Watch Series 9 is carbon neutral. Now, this is only with select Apple Watch bands for now. Uh, by 2030, Apple wants to have all of their products carbon neutral, so the rest of the bands will be, will be added in the future. But for this Apple Watch Series 9, you can for the first time get a carbon neutral Apple Watch, which is pretty cool. So besides reducing the materials, uh, using more recycled materials and everything, uh, they've also offset all the electricity that you're expected to consume charging it uh, in the life cycle of the Apple Watch. So they'll, they'll plant trees or uh, fund new um, renewable electricity projects, which is pretty cool. And also for the transport, they're making the box smaller, which we already know that trick. And they're trying to ship more of it by sea which takes way longer, but also produces way less carbon dioxide than other transports like airplane. So yeah, this might be a small or even useless feature for you, but it's pretty important, I think, for me and for the environment, so I wanted to mention it on this video. So, this has been all the features from the Apple Watch Series 4 to the Apple Watch Series 9, and as you can see, there are quite a few now, while most of the models only add one or two things, when you start stacking the generations, they start to add up and it starts to make sense to upgrade. So in this case, if you still have an Apple Watch Series 3, I will tell you to stop this video right now, stop what you're doing and go get a new one. I don't care if it's the Series 9, even with the Series 7, I think you will notice a big difference. So yeah, if you see uh, maybe an Apple Watch Series 8, that's on a discount. You can get it and I guarantee you'll notice the difference. However, as always, if you can afford it, I would recommend to go for the Series 9 because they will always last longer, especially with the new chip. You're guaranteed to have updates and support for longer. But yeah, this has been everything I wanted to tell you today. Thank you very much for sticking this long if you did. And if you have any questions about any of the upgrades on the Apple Watch or anything, please leave them down below in the comments and I will do my best to answer. Also, don't forget to thumbs up if you like the video, it really helps the channel. And also subscribe if you like Apple and want to see more videos like this or more unboxings or more reviews. I actually have a pretty cool unboxing coming up, which is gonna be 
um, interesting, but I also have a fun video with that same product um, that I'm planning. So if you want to, if you don't want to miss it, then subscribe. But yeah, thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.